Aaron Taylor-Johnson has reportedly signed on to Bond 26, with Eon expected to announce the news later this week. And now, first of all, when I saw this, I thought, oh God, no. I do not like the idea of Aaron Taylor-Johnson being Bond for the next, it could be three, four, five movies. I would imagine three at bare minimum. And to me, he isn't what I pictured as the next Bond. I was thinking of more of a Henry Cavill and Idris Elba. And I mean, with both of those, you do, you know what you get. With Henry Cavill, he would have been a good, a very solid Bond, but we've already seen him as a spy multiple times in a fair few films. And I think Idris Elba is a little bit too old. I think he's about 10 years too late to play Bond. Because, you know, if you're looking at a third and fourth film with Idris Elba, and he could be... He could be mid, mid-60s mid pushing what Sean Connery was in Never Say Never Again. So I don't think Idris Elba would have been the right pick. But Henry Cavill for me, mm, he, he would have really... That's who I would have gone with, Henry Cavill. If I, if I was the head of Eon, I would have chosen Henry Cavill. But Aaron Taylor-Johnson is the official... Well, what seems like the official pick of Bond 26. All the major news outlets are reporting it. And it's expected to be announced officially later this week. Now... Is he a good pick for Bond is my first choice and throughout the day today, it was announced pretty much earlier this morning, late last night, the pick of Aaron Taylor-Johnson has grown on me slightly throughout the day and I mean there's been buzz about Aaron Taylor-Johnson for a good 12 to 18 months now being the next Bond, he's been one of the, the front runners to replace Daniel Craig and I don't think it's completely unexpected that he will be Bond 26, I don't think it is at all but it's kind of come out of nowhere. Last year, um, Eon and Barbara Broccoli announced that there was no official script and they weren't going to be casting Bond anytime soon. And to me, and a lot of other people, that kind of gave the impression that they won't be rolling into production with the next Bond until 2025, well, 2026, 2027. So yeah, it is kind of surprising that's come out of nowhere almost, but yeah, as a pick, it is growing on me, Aaron Taylor Johnson. It is growing on me throughout the day. I think he's got the face for Bond. I don't think he has the, uh, the voice for Bond. I think he's a little bit too squeaky, um, if you listen to his accent and the way he talks. And, but Bullet Train is what sold Aaron Taylor Johnson for a lot of people, playing a, a cocky kind of... a cockney who's very cocky, with swagger. I can see why people would be sold on Taylor Johnson as Bond from that performance alone, but... Yeah, it's, it definitely is a solid choice. Now that I've come to think of it, it could have been much, much worse. Um, you know, a lot of people say that Bond should have been a woman. For me, that's just it's a no-no in terms of would you make Batman Batgirl? No. So I don't think Bond should become a woman. It's just James Bond is the character. It doesn't need to be changed. Um, but yeah, Taylor Johnson, he's done some very solid performances. Nocturnal Animals is probably his best performance, in my opinion. I think it was 2016. He played a much darker character, um, kind of psychotic. But it was a really solid performance in that film. Um, Amy Adams played the character across from him. And yeah, a, a psychotic, dark role in that film. But it was solid, a really solid performance. Obviously, he played Quicksilver in the Avengers films. And now Craven the Hunter and the Fall Guy are his upcoming films. He probably will take a bad rap for the Craven the Hunter film. It looks pretty terrible. The Sony Marvel films are not good. Especially when he gets announced as Bond. You know, we will have more pressure on him in these films. But And it is also being reported that Eon are expected to go into production later this year with this Bond film. Which to me is kind of baffling. That would probably be looking at a 2026 release date possibly late 2025 but that is much sooner than i actually expected it seemed like eon and the broccolis were planning on taking a fairly big gap and they weren't in a rush for the next bond film but that seems to have changed will taylor johnson be the bond for the next 20 years could it even be longer than craig was bond i don't think it would be longer i think if you look at craig and how long he's bond for there was a lot of strange scenarios in there for example casino rails in 2006 and he didn't finish well, No Time to Die didn't release until 2021. Obviously, he didn't initially intend to come back after Spectre in 2015. And then, obviously, No Time to Die had multiple delays because of the pandemic. It was delayed over two years. So, yeah, I don't think Taylor Johnson will be the Bond for as long as Craig was. But I'd expect Eon to make a good three to four films with Taylor Johnson. But we could probably expect to see them much closer together. 
And now the thing that interests me the most regarding all of this is the director and the writer of the upcoming Bond film. Surely with Aaron Taylor Johnson being announced later this week or going into next week, we will hear about a director and writer within the next few months for this Bond film. And that really excites me to think of what possible directors are Eon going to go for. It's the opening film for Taylor Johnson. I don't think they're going to give it the Casino Royale treatment in terms of I don't think it'll be a kind of hidden origin story like Casino Royale was. But... Yeah, it's, he's, not, he's not a young guy in terms of his 30s. He's a, he's a similar age to Daniel Craig was, if not a bit older, maybe. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what director they choose, the writer, and how they're going to approach this first Bond film with. Are they going to jump into a later a book, a Fleming book, which was later on? Will they do a similar thing to Casino Royale and introduce back into a, an earlier story? This choice has grown on me throughout the day. And you know it's gonna it's gonna be a good few years until or a good one to two years until we do see Taylor Johnson as Bond. So it's gonna be interesting to see how people react to the first trailer and the first set images of Taylor Johnson as there was a lot of hate and dismissal for Daniel Craig when he was announced. If you watch some documentaries about the creation of Casino Royale, the press and fans absolutely hated Craig. You know, he was Bond, he was smaller than Pierce Brosnan. And people were not happy at all. I don't think Taylor Johnson is going to be hated straight away when he's announced as Bond, but I can see it. I can see it being pretty controversial. So it is going to be really interesting to see where they go with Bond 26. It's happened much sooner than I expected. So thank you for watching. I'm going to cover more Bond 26 news and cover more Bond films coming up in the future. Make sure to subscribe and tell me what you think about Aaron Taylor Johnson being signed on to Bond 26.